Hello, my soccer universe. Yes, the Europa League started as well. And uh, typically, but justifiably, I only watched one single game, um, which was, of course, the home game of Lask. I'm giving my new pink Lask jersey some love. I don't have the white one yet, which is very similar, except it has also a white collar. Other than that, it's pretty much the same thing as this pink one. Uh, black one's here. How do you like my background here? I chose all the Europa League teams this year, which are only four. But I chose two that I have double jersey, which is Lask. Well, Lask I have more than double. We have two Roma jerseys. Uh, and we have Arsenal and United. So that's the background for the Europa League. I'm somewhat hoping that for the knockout stage, it's not only that all these teams are going through, but that we have a little bit of uh, stuff coming from the Champions League. So that's this will get a little bit more colorful because at the moment it's all red, black, white. Not as attractive as, for instance, my Champions League background. As I said, I'm, let's talk about the last match. Um, that's the one I saw. Um, I was not there. Don't have a babysitter for the matches, and I was so happy that they all played at seven. But unfortunately, um, yeah, my mom, who is usually usually watching the kids, Thursdays are her day. So mm, I got a few jerseys. The last unpacking vi vi video is kind of making up for that, and that's why I have this jersey already. So yeah, uh, bittersweet, but you know, it was not that bad. Um, I would have loved to be there. To be honest, but I didn't mind watching it at home either. Um, it was actually nice when you when I was driving home and there was the stadium already lit. Uh, you know, I live on a hill above the city, and then in the background, the stadium is also all on hill, and we have the nice view over the city. Uh, was a really nice view, and funnily enough, that was already in the morning happening. So uh, morning and evening, they had the floodlights on for the entire day. That doesn't compute. So talking about the game, I have to say, to me, the game was never really in doubt, but it was also bittersweet. I mean, it started out kind of ugly, slowish, but then Lusk reasserted themselves with their nasty pressing style that they are now known for, uh, kind of copy of Salzburg. Uh, and yeah, they created chances. I think uh, Tete had two chances where one of those I think you gotta make then Klaus had once a chance where he got blocked and then uh, going to Goiginger didn't go well. You know, chances were, were there and I kind of got a little bit desperate because you're going to make those goals. you got to make those. And only the Rosenberg was not really dangerous. Only for about 10 minutes, 30th to 40th minute. I had the feeling that, yeah, maybe Rosenberg could get something there, but they didn't. They really... I don't know if they had a shot on goal, and if they had, it was a minor shot, shot on goal. And then uh, it got to be from a dead ball situation where then Lask makes the 1 0 right at the stroke of halftime. Michael in Holland with the hip puts it into the net. He was near the near post and puts it uh, into the net 1 0 at the half. And right after the half, Klaus has to make it 2 0. Absolutely has to make it 2 0. Uh, he's Clear in front of the goalkeeper, he wants to lob, lob it over and misses by a hair. Uh, that could have sealed the game and it kept me on the edge for most of the rest of the game because it was only one goal and they never could make the second one. They had beautiful com combinations even at times, but uh, the second goal didn't want to arrive. Rosenberg didn't want to arrive either, which was the luck, so in the end you run away. 1-0 winners and for the first group game I don't want to complain much I just think that it could have been a much more impressive scoreline much more impressive is what I have to say about Wolfsburg though who played at Gladbach and completed a perfect start for Austria into the group stages probably the best start of Austrian teams that I can remember personally uh, with all three winning and emphatically so Salzburg 6-2 Lask not so emphatic, but could have been emphatic. 1 0. And Wolfsburg went to Gladbach, Mönchengladbach in Germany and won 4 0. That result boggles my mind. Wolfsburg is a small uh, town in eastern Carinthia, so in uh, southern Austria. Uh, 
they cannot even play their home games at home because the stadium doesn't allow that. They want to go to Klagenfurt, the capital of Carinthia, where they, we have a beautiful stadium, but don't get me started on that one because there is no team actually playing in there. And at the moment, they have a forest in there. It's a nice installation. I actually see a little bit of value in there. And because there's no team playing, they didn't know that Wals Wolfsburg will qualify for the Europa League. That, that was just... Uh, <laughs> no, no one talked about that once this was decided. So they have to play in Graz. But the stadium actually looks in interesting with, with the forest in there. They play a similar style to Salzburg and Lusk, uh, which completely exposes the Viennese teams, I have to say, uh, that have more money than any team but Salzburg. I mean, it's basically Sal Salzburg has twice as much as uh, Rapid and Austria, with twice as much as then, at, at least twice as much than the rest of the league. And they are in absolute shambles at the moment, has to be said. So it's kind of nice that the smaller teams are taking away the excuse from the big Viennese teams that, you know, we don't have assets and we'll never be able to compete with Salzburg. If you do good work, you could compete with Salzburg. I'm just saying that. But Salzburg showing that if you have an identity uh, and a clear plan, you can be successful because Salzburg is piling up points in Europe for years. Uh, against teams that should be bigger and now the Lusk and Wolfsburg are doing similar stuff in Austria so you know a uh, shift will have to happen absolutely incredible I mean the Gladbach coach is even Marco Rose uh, who has been in Salzburg up until uh, the end of last season who knows Wolfsburg and they still cannot get it Sean Weissman in the third third minutes just taps the ball in. Uh, Light giving the 31st, really nicely taken uh, goal. 2 0. Ritzmeier, and the ball's a little weird one, slams it in the net. 3 0 at the half, and Light Cap completes the Gladbach disaster in the 68. 4 0. And the funny thing is, I didn't watch the game. I said I went to bed. I decided I better get a good night's sleep. Because I was, was already kind of shaky from watching all the chat and everything and having one night not so good sleep was good that I did that. But I was dreaming about the, the, the ad game. It is, if I don't watch it, I have this in my dreams. And what was I dreaming? That Wolfsburg makes it sensationally 4 0, even 5 0 at Gladbach. 5 0 was in there. I dreamt that. <laughs> I cannot believe that. And then I, I wake up in the morning, rolled over in bed, and I said, okay, let's quickly watch the highlights and see. How Gladbach is beating Wolfsburg and they win 4 0. I cannot believe it. Absolutely incredible. So, what I want to do is, I want to. I watched the big highlight show I saw from every game. I saw every goal, but don't expect me to remember all that now. But I'm running through the results group by group. And um, to me, the biggest result was actually the second one that you have here on the screen, um, which is Apoel losing at home to Dudelange. Düdeling, we say in German, uh, German, I think in uh, Dutch they say it as well. And it was an absolute crazy game. Uh, Düdeling had a 1 0 lead at the half, double it shortly after, make it 2 0. Then within a couple of minutes, Apoel scored three goals to turn around 54th, 56th, 58th. They score goals to make it 3 2. But in the 71st, uh, Dudelange equalizes and they get uh, through Sinani a very late win. The first win for a Luxembourg team in an Europa League group stage away to Apoel. And I remember Apoel was actually uh, in the Champions League playoffs. They um, they played at home a 1-1 against Ajax. Or 0-0. 0-0, 1-1, something like that. So that's not a bad team. So absolutely stunning result. And honestly, the result of, of the evening. Sevilla had much less trouble in Karabag, where I only thought the weird thing is that the camera perspective was kind of low. The second goal of Sevilla, a really nice one, a uh, lob over the keeper, uh, one to watch out for. Then we had Dynamo Kiev in Group B, um, winning against Malmö 1 0 in Copenhagen, getting a um, 1 0 over Lugano um, from Switzerland, of course. So um, that is kind of an even group. I'm not gonna go through standings at this moment because. Uh, what's the point on on honestly you can compute it yourself basel with a really surprising result uh, to me and also in mind lusk beat basel in the champions league playoffs uh, not in champions league qual uh, qualifying 
5-0 against Krasnodar. Krasnodar beat Porto. It must have been a fluke result. Then they were absolutely annihilated by um, Olympiacos, and now they're annihilated by Basel. 5-0. Unbelievable. Getafe gets a 1-0 win over Trabzonspor, a win that is was much more emphatic than it's actually shown here for the simple reason that uh, Trabzonspor didn't have a single shot on goal. And yeah, that's uh, Getafe gets the goal. In Group D, we talked about Lusk's workmanlike win against uh, Rose Rosenberg. The other game was actually quite a good one between PSV and Sporting, where PSV took a lead through Marlen and then even uh, Ongold made it 2-0. Uh, Sporting got back into contention. Sporting actually wearing quite interesting jerseys. Uh, threw a penalty uh, late in the first half, so it was 2-1 uh, uh, at the half. Um, PSV then took through Baumgartel. That sounds a very Austrian name, I have to say. have to check where he's from. Uh, and the 48th makes it 3-1 and only a late goal was a little bit too little too late for Sporting. But I think this could be an interesting group. Group E. Cluj turns the game around against Lazio. Who took an early lead but then completely lost control of the game. I think there was a penalty. Uh, and then the second goal was a f uh, shot that went on to, on, onto the bar that from far out in. So that was... Kind of um, a surprising result. Ren Celtic ends 1-1. Then nominally the biggest game of the evening, I think, was Frankfurt against Arsenal, which for the longest time was a very open affair. Um, absolutely open affair with both teams having chances. And Frankfurt created many, many chances. I think someone even said they, they never has Arsenal given up as many chances. Arsenal playing, of course, with the B team, except for, I think, David Luiz was in there, Obama Young and was there, Pepe. Let's quickly check the uh, li lineup. I think that that's what I saw. And it has to be said, Frankfurt didn't take their chances. Uh, yeah, Shaka. I mean, it was... Shaka, da, 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 was Obama Young. Pepe came, came, came a little bit later and Torreira was also playing. Arsenal takes the lead through Willock because Frankfurt wastes their chances. Not that great chances, but they did waste them. Um, in the second half, Frankfurt again trying. It was open, Arsenal also having chances, but right at the point when you really thought that Frankfurt might find a breakthrough, they get a red card. And that uh, is then exploited by our Arsenal, who gets two goals in short succession for, uh, from Saka and Obama Young. Um, group standard uh, Liege against Guimaraes 2-0 and Porto uh, wins against uh, Young Boys more emphatically than the scoreline suggests. Um, young Boys only had the penalty, not many chances. I think Porto ran comfortable, ran away as comfortable winners. We had then um, Rangers beating Feyenoord 1-0, Espanyol Ferencvaros 1-1 and then there's the another really big and uh, somewhat surprising result with Ludo Goretz Raskrat beating uh, CSK Moscow 5 1. Even more um, remarkable because Moscow had a 1 lead at the half and then Ludo Goretz just rolled over them 5 1. Um, Ghent against Saint Etienne 3 2. Uh, absolutely crazy game. There were uh, goalkeeping mistakes um, in there. I think the second goal for Saint Etienne was that very enjoyable game to watch from the highlights and the highlights said this was a, a fun game game to watch i think ghent had a 2-0 in a 3-1 lead but saint etienne wouldn't go away but, oh no i think saint etienne equalized and then uh, it was 3-1 for ghent um in the same group wolfsburg gets a relatively easy win 3-1 over Ol alexandria not many people there they just made it over 10,000. they had also a kind of a lot of fun instagram posts saying that yeah we'll allow to put uh, alcoholic beer and all that kind of stuff that they had, that you can come and blah 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 didn't really help. Then the group uh, with Wolfsburg Gladbach 0, Wolfsburg 4 still cannot believe that. Roma wins 4 0 against Bajak Shehir also uh, was not much trouble. The first goal was an own goal for Bajak Shehir and then Jaco makes it 2 0 and then late in the uh, game Zaniolo in 71st uh, and uh, Kleivert in the stoppage time make it 4 0. Roma playing in their nice navy jerseys where I have asked my colleagues, do you think I will get this in a year or later? I actually really like this jersey. That's just uh, the color is a little bit putting me off. I have had have, have to say, but you know this would be a Roma color that I don't have yet, similar to the yellow one that I had last season. Uh, 
Wolves lose at home to Braga. Uh, that was a surprise. Uh, Slovan against Besiktas was also one of those crazy games. Do you remember Loris Karius? Yep, he plays for Besiktas now. And made an uh, incredible mistake, uh, basically blocking his own defender so that Slovan can find an easy 1-0. Uh, one nil. Besiktas gets back into the game and leads at the half 2-1 and then completely crumbles in the second half, loses 4-2. Um, United gets a glorious 1-0 win over Astana. Uh, the more interesting game was definitely uh, Partizan against Alkma, where Alkma took a lead. Partizan, also thanks to a red card to Alkma, turns it around 2-1, but Alkma still gets the equalizer. That was the Europa League yesterday. Lots of action. I'm afraid that the way things are going, I will always watch the last game. So groups A through F, I will only see highlights in the morning if I get the chance. And given my daughter's schedule at school, there is a chance for that. Uh, and other than that, yeah, I will watch the conference for the other gr uh, groups. Let me know what games you watched, uh, which games you liked. Um, give me more info if you have. Drop a comment below, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, uh, this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will have an interesting collection video coming up for you too. So up until then, bye! Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel, as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day, bye!